Now we're going to look today at a, the idea of scheduling, which is assigning workers to, um, to, to carry out parts of a project and working out how many workers you'll need and how long uh, each of them will work for. So this is be a common uh, thing used by engineers on a work site where they're building a, a complex now or building a power station or whatever. So here we have a, a classic example. We're going to draw a Gantt chart, which is just the time schedule for each worker, as we shall see. And uh, here is the project. And we have various um, activities. Now, activity A, I'm just going to work out the total float for each one, as we saw in, the, in one of the earlier um, videos. The total float for A is nine, take away zero, take away six. Nine, take away zero, take away six, that's three. And that means it has a float time of three. In other words, it could start three hours, three days late, and still the project will be on time. On to B, its total float is 12, take away zero, take away 12. 12, take away zero, take away 12 is zero. So it is a critical activity. C, uh, the total float is eight, take away zero, take away seven. That's one. D, 14, take away six, take away five. That's three. E, 20, take away 12, take away three, which is five. Uh, F, where is F? 13, take away 12, take away one. It's zero, so it's a critical activity. G, 13, take away seven, take away five. One. H, 20, take away 12, take away six. Two. And I, 20, take away 13, take away seven. Zero. So the critical activities are the ones with total code of zero, B, F, and I. And the critical path from start to finish is B followed by F followed by I. Um, B, B, F, I is the critical path. Now, what is our Gantt chart? Our Gantt chart is simply to write down where each activity may start and may end. And we use a time scale of zero to 20 because this takes 20 days. A starts at, at zero and runs to six. So here's, oh, let me start, sorry. We start with the critical path. B uh, starts at the beginning, it takes 12. Here's the critical path. It takes, B takes 12. So I do 12 boxes, each representing a day. There's B, followed by F, which takes one, followed by I, which takes seven. They have to take place straight along in one after the other, um, because that is the critical path. So that's the first one. Now, A, A starts at zero and runs to six. So here's A, zero to six. That's A, but it has a float of three. So that six, that, that um, box of length six can float up and down anywhere in there at our convenience, uh, if we wish. The dotted line represents the float and A could start as late as three and run up to uh, nine. Yeah, up to nine, that's correct. Next is, apart from is C, which starts at uh, zero and runs for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There is C, but it has a total float of one. That appears there, uh, uh, added on to C. D, where, does, where is D on our 
uh, chart. It starts at six and runs for five. D starts at six. It cannot start uh, any earlier than six and it runs for five days, but it has a total float of three. So it could start three days later and with the project will still be on time. E, um, it starts, the earliest it can start is after 12. So there's 12. Its length in time is three. So there it is. But it has a total float of five. So we put five boxes onto it and it could start later if it's convenient for us. F is a critical path, it's been dealt with already. G, the earliest G can start is at seven. So here it is, seven is there. And it runs for one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, there's G. What about its total float? It's just one, so it could start one. It could, that box could float forward one. H is a is no H is not critical. H the earliest H can start it is twelve. So I go to twelve on my chart, and it has a length of six, so it's six boxes long. And what about its total float? It is from the chart above two. So there is the that is the Gantt chart for our, uh, all our activities. Now, there's another question. The question asked is at midday on the 15th day. Now, if the first day is from zero to one, the 15th day is from 14 to 15. So here is midday on the 15th day. There are two questions. What activities must be happening on that day, at that moment, and what activities may be happening. So I'm going to write down what activities must be happening. Well, I must be happening. I has no float up and down because it's a critical path. It's a critical activity. Uh, D couldn't be happening. It must be over by then. E could be happening, but you could slide E up along. You could float it up. That's why you can see the idea. So E might be happening, but it, then again, it might not. So E will qualify for the second one. Uh, G uh, could not be happening. So the only other one is H. And even if we move H up to, it will still be happening. So E, m uh, m uh, sorry, H must be happening there. If we slide H forward, it will still be in action halfway through day 15. Whereas E could slide up, so E might be happening, and I and H must be happening. That is our first GAM chart. Now, if we start scheduling, which means using a specific number of workers to do our job, we have to assign each job to workers, and there are rules about this, that there's no sharing. Once you've started an activity, you must finish it. Uh, and if there's a choice of worker, you assign the worker who's free first. And the key thing is, if there is a choice of tasks to assign to a free worker who's suddenly free because he's finished the previous activity, you assign the activity with the lowest late time. That is the key. It is important that there are often more than one way of solving this problem. We used to say there's more than one way of skinning a cat, but I don't know if you can say such dreadful things in modern, in the 21st century, um, with all those cat lovers around. So let's have a look at, uh, we're going to assume that we've been given our Gantt chart, our, our activity network, We've drawn up our Gantt chart, and here is the next task. What is the lower bound of the number of workers needed? 
Well, I'm going to add up the time for A. This is this is the chart here, A and B and C. I'm adding them up 10 and 9 and 11 and 11 and 4 and 2 and 1, all the way up. You get that the total number of, total amount of time is 10 hours. And the critical path is 30 hours. So we can do this, conduct all of this in 30 hours. So how do we work out the lowest path, the, the lowest bound? If there are 110 hours of work to be done, and the most any one person can do is 30 hours, because one worker, there are only 30 hours available. So if we, any one worker can do that, can at most do 30 hours, when we divide 110 by 3, that's 11 divided by 3, it's 3 and 3 thirds, we know that the number of workers has to be at least 3 and 2 thirds. And therefore, since there's no, no such thing as a part worker, you're either a, a, a human or you're not, the lower bound is 4. What does that mean? You must have at least 4 workers to get this job done. Uh, if the first three of them did 30 and 30 and 30, and the last one did 20, those that's eight hours of work, that would cover the 110. So we need at least four. However, that does not mean that four workers will do the job because there are certain tasks that have to be done simultaneously, and it might appear that we will need five. In fact, I have a very strong sense that we will need five, because if we look at, say, 18, the 18th hour, H will have to be done, D will have to be done, and I, J, and L will be, have to be doing. So I have a very strong instinct that since a, a line coming down at 18 hits this Gantt chart at five places, I suspect we're going to need five workers. So here goes the first time we're going to see, we're going to assign individual workers uh, to this task, and here we go. Uh, the first one is, we, to worker one, we're going to assign uh, the critical path. So they get A going on for 10, they get E going on for 4, They get H, which brings us up to 23, followed by uh, K, which brings us up to 30. And that is one worker assigned to the critical path. Now, worker number two, well, B and C are both happening at the same time, so we need worker number two and worker number three. We'll assign uh, the one with the uh, a B and C, the one with, well, they've got the same late time, so it doesn't matter which we give B, which runs for nine. We'll assign that to worker number two, B, and we'll assign C, which runs for 11, to worker number three. Now, here's how we work it out. After nine hours, worker B is free. What of the other job? We've assigned A, B, C, E, H, and K. What of the other jobs will be, which job will be assigned to them? Let's have a look. We look at F, which has a lead time of 14. We look at G, which also has a lead time of 14. We could uh, assign them D, but D is a late time of 23, and the other ones are much later. So we don't assign D, even though we could start it, we assign F or G. And you see at the end that putting in F or G makes no difference, as in a lot of these uh, questions we've had in this chapter. So I'm going to assign F, since it's earlier in the alphabet. It can only start at the earliest after 11. So B will have to take a little coffee break, start at 11, and do um, F. Now, uh, what about at 11 hours, worker number three is idle? What do we assign to worker number three? 
well, G and D are the options. The others are much later. Uh, G is a late finishing time of 14. D is a finishing a late time of 23. The lower of those is G. So we will assign G. Uh oh, can we start it after 11? Yes, we can. It can start at 11. Always keep an eye on the what must be done. The earliest time it can start is 11, so G can be assigned. After 12 hours, worker number three is idle. What will be assigned to worker number three? Well, the next earliest time is D. It has an, an, a finishing a late time of 23, and it takes 11. So we're going to give that to this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 11. That is worker three. Now, what is next to be done? After 13 hours, worker number two becomes idle. Which of the remaining? We've done A, B, C, D, E, and F. So we have G and I, J, L. No, sorry, we've done G. So it's just I, J, and L. Now, I has a finishing time of 30, J has a finishing time of 30, L has a finishing time of 30, so it doesn't make any difference. Um, uh, 13 and eight. after 13, uh, sorry, we can we give I. I can't start until after 14, so we have another little coffee break. We're doing well in the coffee break. And we, that takes 15 more, so that brings us all the way up to there. That is I assigned to that one. Now, we have J and L still to assign. J takes 15, so worker 3 will not have 15 hours. So we will simply have to assign J and L separately, because they have to be done uh, simultaneously, to two more workers. Let's start J after 14 hours, and it goes on for 15, then you up to 29, and there is J, and K can also, what about L? L can also start at 14, and it goes on for 16 hours, so it goes right up to the end. And there we have our um, workers assigned, if you want, you can colour these in. I only can shape in the main makes them look much clearer. Uh, with a highlighter pen, it makes things look much better. And the only trouble is you must not go outside long, as my mother always told me. There you are. That's a very nice... Uh, it, the lower bound was four, but we actually needed five, because towards the end, you need five people working the same thing. Now, four, uh, worker four and worker five, We'll have the morning off, but uh, maybe we just pay them for the half day. Now, the final kind of question is where you're asked to do the project, but it can't be done in the minimum time because you'll be given a reduced number of workers. So that it will go over the critical time because the number of workers has been reduced. And here's an example from the book. This is the diagram which shows a project. And you can see that the critical time, if we look at the end, is 2020. So the critical time is 20, and the critical path is ACFHJ uh, going along. Uh, you'll just notice that the critical day is, um, uh, uh, is one of the critical paths. So let's read the questions. The first one is, what is the total time for all the activities? Well, if we add up the time for activity A, which is four, and B, which is three, and C is two, and D, and add them all up, we get four and three and two and four, five and four and seven and six and three and eight and four, which is 46 days. And the pretty critical time is obviously 20, because you can see at the end, 2020. So if we divide 46 by 20, now, that, why do we do that? Because we've got 46 days of work to do, and we've got at most 20 days. So the total time, that's the answer, is 46. But the question, next question is, what is the lower bound for the number of workers needed for the project if it is to end in the minimum amount of time? 
Well, you would need 46 divided by 20, because the most any one worker can do is 20, and there are 46 uh, days of work, so that's 2.3. So the number of workers needed is at least 2.3. So the minimum number is three workers, because you can't have, uh, you can't have 2.3 human beings. So if you had three workers, you could manage to get the entire job done in 20 days. Well, that's, well, it's not a guarantee, but that's the minimum number that's required. Now, the next thing is draw up a schedule if you're only going to get, to get two workers are assigned to you. So we know that this project is going to go beyond 20 days. So here's what we do. We get two workers. We give the first one at the start, A and B are four and three. It doesn't make any difference which we do four and which we do three. That's five, that's 10, that's 15, that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five, that's 20. And one, two, three, four, five, 25 and 30. It might go up over around that time. So the first worker will take on uh, A, and the second worker will take on B, because they have to start at the start B, and they last four days and three days. Now, you look at the first one to be idle. Worker number two is idle after three days. So let's see what job we could give to worker two after three days. Is it C, D, or E? It's hardly going to be F, G, H, or J, because they go on much later. It's the one with the earliest late time. So uh, C cannot begin after three, because C can only begin after A has finished. So it couldn't, it couldn't start that one. Nor could D. D cannot start straight away. But we could start E straight away, and E takes four uh, days. So we'll give it E because E has the earliest late time and it can start straight away. So we'll give it E, which is the only one we can start straight away, and that takes four days. One, two, three, four. E has a duration of four. So that would be economical. We'll give that to worker number two. Now, after going back to worker number one, worker number one is idle after four days. So which will we give it? We will give it either C, which is an, uh, an er a late time, so the earliest late time is six, or D, which is 10. Well, C is earlier, so we'll give it C. So it takes two days, we will give it C. Now, which one is idle next? Number uh, worker number one will be after six days. What would we give it to do after six days? Well, uh, we could give it D because D will be ready to be done once A is finished, and A is finished. So we could give it D uh, uh, with a late time of eight or F with thirteen. The others are all much bigger. Uh, so definitely D is the next one because that's the earliest late time of 10. So that will take five days. One, two, three, four, five. So that's uh, D taken care of. Now we look at who is next idle. And the answer is the next person to be idle is worker number one, who is idle after seven days. And A, B, C, D and E are all done. So we either give it F with a late time of 13, or H, 16, or G, 16, or I, 16. Well, the earliest of those is F. So we give it F, which takes seven. One, two, three. So F takes seven. So let's go back and take the earliest time uh, when this becomes idle. That's worker number one. That worker word number one is idle after a time of 11. What will we give it? Well, A, B, C, D, E, and F are all done. 
So we could give it G with an early time of 16, H with an early time of 16, or I with an early time of 16. So they're all the same. So we just give it G because it's in alphabetical order. And G has a duration of 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. G is the next one. Now, we will give... F, uh, worker number two was idle after 14. We can see that's 15, so this is 14. Will be assigned H or I? Well, H and I both have an early time of, a late time of 16. So we could give it there, three there. But here is where having brains makes a big difference because J has to finish after both I and H. So, you could regard I and J, I and J have to be done one after the other. So, supposing I, if I gave, it, it, look at it like this, I and J have to be done in succession, so they might as well be done by one person, and they come up to a time of 12. So who would you give the the other assignment is just H. Because I and J are going to take 12 and have to be done in a row, we regard that as a 12 bar, bar of chocolate. And we will give that to the one with the earliest time, which is worker number two. I'm going to give worker number two I followed by J because J has to follow I. So here I go with worker that's going to be I, which is 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, followed by J, which is another 4. I and J have to follow one another, so J can't finish until I is finished. So uh, this part worker is going to do I followed by J, and the other worker is going to do the H, which just takes 3 hours. Try it yourself. If you want to try this at home yourself, and um, you will find that you can't do it quicker than doing I and J. If you give the first one H, you will get into a tizzy with the other two because J will be waiting for I to be finished and we'll go on further. Further than what? Well, the ending for this job is 26 days. We can do this job in 26 days. That's the minimum number of days with two workers. And that is the rota or the assignment the schedule for those two workers there's the assignment for a worker one and there are the assignments for worker two there is no other way you can get it done earlier try it yourself you'll, you'll see that because jay is waiting it won't work and that's the third kind of question where you have a restricted number of workers and it takes both intelligence as well as a routine thanks very much